Hello everybody, how are you all doing? It's been a while. <laughs> Welcome to an impromptu and an unscripted video, you know what that means, all over the place. Probably gonna ramble, but I mean, I think some of you enjoy it. I think some of you enjoy the scripted ones and some of you enjoy the chaotic ones. I don't know, are you here for the chaos? I hope some of you are here for the chaos. Today, I want to talk about the things that I've bought while I'm here in Japan, things that I cannot live without, things that I think I could have gone without, and uh, yeah, basically my recommendations because I have been living in Japan for over a year now and I want to report back to you what I've learned. I've made a small list on my phone, I hope that'll be enough to keep me on track, but yeah, let's give it a go. Actually, another thing that I want to mention is the reason why I haven't been uploading like at all. Uh, I have been very present on Instagram and mainly Instagram stories. <laughs> Quick update, I think I'll do like a proper update during a vlog or something. Actual update is that I finally have a job here in Japan. I've had a job for maybe a few weeks now. I've had training and now I'm like officially in the job. It's a part-time job. It's still considered a baito. It's actually considered freelance because I have like really random hours and the job is I'm teaching English and French at a conversation school. I know, right? I'm doing what everybody does, but there is a chance that I may get a visa from it, so I'm pushing through, but that means that I have school, that means that I have my freelance editing job that I have to keep because the teaching job is also freelance, and uh, I basically have like maybe one or two students a day at the moment, so like yeah, I just need to keep all the hustles, which means no time for like these hustles, which Let's face it, I don't, I don't get anything from YouTube um, except the joy of making videos and um, sending them out to you guys. It is rewarding, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't pay rent. Anyway, let's get started with the video. Okay, let's settle down here and get started. I think it's been one year, two months? Hang on, almost one year and three months here in Japan. One of the very first things I bought when I moved here into the shared house when I realized that I was not gonna be able to use the shared kitchen area. TLDR is that I'm not good with strong smells and the shared kitchen is always kind of dirty obviously because like there are close to 100 people using it every day and I just can't, I can't cook in there. But because of that I very quickly decided to invest in a rice cooker because you can cook like so many things in there. I started out cooking like oatmeal and rice obviously in it. I think one time I tried cooking like a pancake because I saw in a video that you could cook like this big ass rice cooker pancake. It was a total fail. It was gross. I had to throw the whole thing out. I hate throwing food away so. These days I just cook rice in it. I cook rice, throw in some frozen veggie an egg or so, just let it cook and it's pretty yummy and then I add like toppings like natto or kimchi you all know I like all the stinky foods <laughs> that's like my like low income meal when I have like really nothing left it's just like rice, veggies, egg and anything I can throw on top of it but this rice cooker was definitely a necessary purchase I did consider even getting like a small oven but I really don't want to have the smell of food in my tiny room here. I mean, it's not that tiny, but it is just one living area where I sleep, where I work. So I don't want like the smell of food constantly lingering in my room. Like the smell of rice is fine. I throw away like the natto packaging as soon as possible. I don't say move the kimchi. But yeah, for now the rice cooker does the trick. And my voice is already disappearing. Awesome. Um, <laughs> rice cooker and at the same time as the rice cooker i just bought a simple uh, water kettle an electric water kettle so i could just make like tea and stuff and i also use it with a purchase that i made last winter a hot water bottle because yes i have like the heating with the air conditioning unit up on top but i don't want to use that all day and night so same as when I was back in Brussels in my freezing cold apartment and same when I was living in my mother's attic for a year 
hot water bottles for the win they just it just you just keep them on your body. It was on my lap when I was working. Took it, took it to bed and snuggled up in the covers. Actually, this is one of the covers I also bought for winter. Very good purchase. Wrap myself up in it even when I'm working during the winter time. So yes, if you're in Japan or actually anywhere in the world and you're on a budget, you don't want to turn the heating on, I recommend investing in a hot water bottle from Amazon and a blanket. Actually, I just had a realization moment. The hot water bottle was actually a gift either from my brother or my mother for Christmas. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but I do count it as an essential for sure. Pretty sure I bought the blanket myself. <laughs> Back to earlier purchases. Another thing that I bought quite early on, I think towards the start of the summer last year, was hair iron. I had a version of these at home back in Belgium but I only use them for special occasions but here with the humidity my hair is just like not presentable whatsoever especially in a city like Tokyo where everyone is so put together and fashionable I just had to get my hands on these I was I'm always worried about heat damage I think these are the kind that are like supposed to not damage your hair too much um, but yeah just just can't live without this i use it like maybe once or twice a week so thankfully not every day but they, they're a lifesaver i don't look like a scraggly mess every time i wash my hair i would recommend this and i would also recommend some hair products to deal with the humidity here in japan let me introduce some of my favorites to you okay the first thing i tried for my hair is this liquid keratin spray i think it's actually called liquid keratin i couldn't find the bottle anymore I haven't used all of it. Actually, I keep forgetting to use it, so I'm not going to put it in one of my indispensables, though I'm sure it's a pretty good thing to try if your hair is damaged. I don't think it really helped with the frizziness due to the humidity and the heat, which was something I was looking for. So I then went to Amazon and bought this, which is coming to the end, but seeing that I've had it for almost a year now is... It's pretty, like, it's, you can use it for a long time. It's the John Frieda Frizz Ease Serum Extra, Extra Strength, Extra Strength, and it's also a heat protectant. So I use this when I, after I wash my hair, and my hair is still a little bit damp, just put it in there, and then I will curl it, same as now. It's really helped a lot with the frizziness, except you're not supposed to put it on the top of your head, because obviously it's like it's oil so i've had to find something else for this area of the head first things first though i do want to mention that right now i'm kind of growing out my bangs actually i have a hair appointment soon and i'll try to figure out what i want to do with these because with the summer it's just like it's awful honestly it's a frizzy mess but i do want to say that these okay they're covered with hair these from Daiso, so the dollar store, this is all you need to just do your do your bangs and they have so many sizes, this is the perfect one for me. So kind of an essential for me when I had bangs, just wanted to mention it. But the thing, the miracle product that helps with flyaways on the top of your head is, uh, actually they have different forms. This is one form of them, it's called a here they say matomake. I've also heard it as matomage. And this one comes like this with a little. It smells really nice too. Like this, and you basically just like catch the flyaways and flatten them so it's kind of a gel. I've loved this in this form, but it's more pricey than the one in its original form. But. I'm not gonna lie, this is empty right now, which is why I I tried the one in the in its original form, but I definitely like this better. You don't get too much at once. It smells so good. This is the brand and honey step 4.0, but it's it's amazing. I really, really love this product. As I've mentioned, I bought it also in its original form and I bought it in extra strong because we have extra frizz this summer. And it's basically like this lock that you just rub on the top of your head. Now I must admit, this works 
fine, but it does make my hair a little bit shiny at the top if I use too much. I'm really like trying to dab it. There's no scent. Actually, it smells a little waxy, like slightly. Um, but this is like the basic version of the... This one says matomage. This one definitely says matomage. So I think I'll keep using this a little longer. And once I can spare it, I'll get this one again because, oh my god, it's so good and it smells so nice. This one is it's fine. It's, it's basic. It is what it is. The non... This one is extra strong. The non extra strong, I think, is a pink thing like this. But it's really easy. Super simple. Just dab. Dab along. Pretty good. I haven't really tried any beauty products that I really love, not that I've been able to really afford anything. What is essential in body care for me at the moment is this soft stone. Huh. Soft stone. Oh, this one is actually extra strong. I thought it was the normal one, but I guess I accidentally bought the extra strong one. This is Japanese deodorant and from other YouTubers videos I've only heard like bad things about Japanese deodorant like not being strong enough and people asking their friends to bring back deodorants from like the West. I've actually I have, I've actually been guilty of that. I've had an acquaintance come over and they were like can I get you anything from Europe and I was like deodorant please. Uh, <laughs> And then turns out that in the meantime, I found this. It was introduced to me by a Japanese friend, actually. I love it. I friggin' love it. It has downsides, but let me explain. Actually, you can buy this in stick form. As you can see, I've used, like, so okay. Yeah, it's almost empty. I've used so much of it. Oh yeah, it's actually, this is all. This is all that's left, this little smidge at the top. Um, uh, you have this in stick form and actually in a kind of a tube, like a cream tube and you can just take the paste and put it under your armpits and you're good to go and this one you just roll it on your armpits, apply it, it's, it's kind of creamy, you know, it's kind of like a weird powdery creamy thing that I don't know what it is, I guess I should look it up, but it seems to be like kind of a natural deodorant and it works, for me at least, it works so much better than anything I've tried so far. I mean, do I need to say it? <laughs> no matter, I'll keep repeating this, no matter how many times you've heard about how terrible Japanese summers are, like Tokyo summers are, you will never understand until you experience it. And I've always kind of gave the side eye to people who I've seen walking around with these but seriously sometimes you cannot do without always have it in my bag the summer will be no exception whatsoever let's talk about laundry a little bit if you didn't know washing machines in Japan don't really use hot water and I'm really bothered by that <laughs> for most things it's okay but i really want to wash my towels in hot water and i really want to wash like my underwear in hot water it's just personal preference and also i've noticed if i don't wash my towels and like my face uh, cloths like flannels in hot water they have like this mildewy smell that won't go away so i bought a bucket you heard me right a bucket what I'll do is boil some hot water, put like all my towels in the bucket or like all my underwear in that bucket, pour the hot water, make sure the water is like isn't completely boiling. Not like you don't want to cook your clothes, you don't want to cook your like the elastic band in your in your underwear, but hot water, like pretty hot water, not boiling, baking soda, let it sit for a little bit, like five minute tops. And then I'd go put it in the wash and honestly no smell whatsoever you can even add a little bit of vinegar in there like this is a natural dis dis disinfectant these and wow this disinfectant 
stuck between French and English, a natural disinfectant. You can add a little vinegar, not too much, or your clothes will smell like vinegar. And then just add your no normal um, detergent in the washing machine and you're good to go. Yeah, so I bought a bucket for my laundry and I'm adding it to the list because maybe you need a bucket also. There are little items that will make your life easier if you have like period cramps. Oh my god, those heated little packs that you can stick to your clothes are a godsend. Obviously, I think I would I would not use them in the summer, but last winter they were a friggin' godsend. I don't know why I waited that long to try them, but they're called Cairo and you can buy them pretty much anywhere. Most of the drugstores are probably the, your, your best bet. Uh, um, but I definitely, definitely recommend those. They are so good, so, so good. And then you have the things that you buy and that are not useful. Like, I really like the gacha. I like the gacha machines. I try not to use them too much. I, in fact, I have pretty decent self-control. I don't have a room completely filled with gacha. Let me see if I can count them. I have three over there, two there. That one was a gift, that's fine. See, for one year and someone who really loves gacha, not too bad. Same with plushies, not too bad. Didn't go overboard with the Pokemon thing, got a few Pokeball, Monster Ball, whatever you call them up there. I've only bought a few books, which is so sad. It's hard to invest in things, especially when you have things like textbooks. I have so many new textbooks in my room, whereas like actual novels, even manga, I haven't bought any except the ones that you may have seen like from one of my old vlogs when I went to Mandarake and bought like some vintage secondhand books and co. Uh, even art supplies, I haven't really bought any new art supplies. I haven't been able to afford new furniture and I've always thought that I would move out of the share house pretty soon, not one year and three months later <laughs> where I'm still stuck here. Uh, so I didn't want to buy any new furniture because I'd have to move them, but yeah, I would really benefit from a little bit more furniture here, but it is what it is. Some things I've bought that were kind of a waste of money. I did buy a hat for the winter, never used it. Bought some gloves, did use those, very necessary. Bought the ones with the little fingers that you can open your phone with, very good. I'm thinking, what else? I bought a water bottle to carry around with me because I was always buying the plastic bottles from the vending machines. So even though they don't cost a lot, I'm like less than one euro, those plastic things, they're not good for the environment, yada yada yada. So I tried going with a, just a normal bottle that had good reviews, didn't leak. I must admit, it, it does not leak. It's a pretty good water bottle, but it's difficult to wash, especially in the shared kitchen. Even though I rinse the crap out of the shared sponges and soap them up and boil them with the hottest water the sink can get to, I still can't get like the, the, the smell of the sponge out and then my water bottle smells of sponge and I guess I could just use my own sponge. It does make sense. I don't know, maybe I'm too lazy to like bring a sponge all the way down to the shared kitchen and then I have to drag it back up to dry here. Oh, I don't know, I'm weird. I'm weird with kitchen stuff, yo. But yeah, I gave up on that water bottle pretty fast and it sucks. And I really like water bottles. They're fun. They're aesthetically pleasing. They can hold a lot of water. And then I never end up using them. And another product that I forgot to mention is that I recently bought a really cheap Amazon black backpack for work because I have a lot of books to carry for school and then to go teach. And I was using like the, the, my shoulder bag and it wasn't good and I felt really weird bringing my, like, my travel orangey colored travel backpack to work. So now I have like the simple Amazon black pack, back, backpack. Um, why am I saying this? That maybe if you want to work in Japan, you'll have to um, 
just buy some really boring looking stuff to keep up appearances and hide a part of yourself oh god i didn't mean to go into that dark that dark path i think i me really mentioned the essentials that i would recommend to other people like really if you're on a budget, invest in the things that <laughs> keep you alive, basically, like the rice cooker and things that like will make you more comfortable. If you do care about your parents, which I think you should to some extent, especially if you're looking for jobs and stuff, yeah, maybe you want to invest in a few products to make you look less like a shriveled, um, drowned rat. I guess <laughs> I don't know what word I'm looking for you guys thank you so much for watching thank you for, so much for sticking around even though I'm very rarely here on YouTube um, but you can catch me on other places and I'm not done with making videos I just need time I just need time and motivation and energy yeah <laughs> I hope you're doing well leave any questions for me down below any comments any anything you want down below as long as it's at least semi nice and um, useful I guess <laughs> anyway thank you my voice is shot I was all over the place but I hope you enjoyed this style of video nonetheless I'll warn you have a good one guys <laughs>